Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the My Little Pony Streamination Season 1, Episode 25, A Party of One. The episode in which Pinkie Pie throws a party, and then she's like, oh, that was so awesome, we should throw a second party. And everyone just makes excuses to not go to the second party for some strange reason, but then they find out it was actually her birthday. Wah wah. Now, first of all, uh, the overwhelming majority of you voted for have the music on, so we're going to go ahead and try to have the music on, and we'll see how many complaints we get about it. As for now, uh, what I want to talk about is the episode proper. I really like this episode. I'm actually kind of curious of, of your guys' thoughts on this one, because I really like this episode. It's it's a really good insight into Pinky, and I completely relate to her in a level that I probably shouldn't. <laughs> but I imagine I'm not alone on that. We do have to address something. Really quick, though. Do you think that the Twilight knocking over all the books counts as books being knocked off the shelves? Like, I can see why it wouldn't be, because she does it pretty deliberately, but... What do you think, guys? Look at the chat over here. I mean, they re do really... It's, it's It depends on the intent of things, because they really like to have those books not being in the shelves. <laughs> I'm seeing a majority saying that it does count. I don't mind counting it. Like, we haven't gotten to the point where the series is going to have Ponyville attacked by a monster of the week semi-regularly, at which point it'll become a little more common to have them knocked off the shelves. Oh my god, they did such a good job with the facial animation. I, know it was no, I actually made a note of that, even, uh, about how good of a job they did animating her facial expressions. I mean, the animation quality in this show in general is top-notch. That's not really super surprising. Let's go ahead and count it. Let's go ahead and count it. So that puts us up to eight books knocked off shelves. So, I like how at the beginning they stretched the song a, a, out across her inviting everyone. Like, I know that sounds like such a minor and stupid thing to comment on, but that's actually a good cinematic technique right there, which is something this show does in general. So in other words, rather than showing us the whole song multiple times, or just showing it once and then implying that she invited the others or whatever, they decide to show us basically a slice iteration of each time, but each time she gets a little bit more worn out because she's you know, been doing this over and over and over. It's it's a really good cinematic technique. That's, I just wanted to comment on that. And of course, poor Pinky getting all worn out by the end. However, there's one other thing I wanted to say about the, the, the song that she sings, and that is... No need to bring a gift. Being there will be enough. Birthdays mean having fun with friends, not getting lots of stuff. I really like that line. It's actually two lines, but whatever. I really like that line. Because that's kind of how I tend to think of it. I mean, don't mistake me, I love giving. But I never ask for anything for my birthday. Or Christmas or anything like that. It's just, yeah, let's go have fun. It's it's a nice line. It's a nice line. And of course, you know, her saying that to rainbows is fun and blah, blah, blah. And meanwhile, Hasbro's like, no, you should buy all our stuff. And then Hasbro explodes. It's strange. Anyways. <clears throat> so. So we have the party. Looks like it would be a mess to clean up after, doesn't it? Although I guess if they have a good vacuum, which, I mean, we see her cleaning up parties in the future, so whatever. <sighs> Bobbing for apples, they've got punch, they've got dancing, they got music. It really does look like what someone would refer to as a party for children. That is to say, something where you're just hanging out, right? And there's nothing wrong with that, just, just hanging out, basically. You know, with music and with decorations and punch and pie. I just wanted to mention that, since it's interesting... I don't know about you guys, but at the point that I'm at in my current life, if I was to arrange a party for someone of my age range, there would probably be activities baked in, right? In fact, if I'm being completely blunt, I'd probably go back to my college years. Actually, probably high school. But no, it's just them hanging out. It's just something that's kind of cool about that I just wanted to comment on. But it's also important for something later, so I wanted to address that first. So... There's no easy way to ease into this one. So let's just get this out of there. Uh, get this out there really quick. 
Pinkie Pie, as they all leave, she's like, oh no, you, you could stay. You, you could stay. There's more cake to be eaten. Please stay. Like, you can hear it in her voice, right? Andrea Liebman, which I'm probably pronouncing incredibly wrong, really earns her paycheck this, this week, doesn't she? Uh, we could we could make fun of this, but ultimately all I see is someone who has found something that really brings her joy in life and desperately doesn't want to not be doing that. So much so that she decides to throw another party for the very next day just because she is that desperate to keep doing it, right? And I don't mean that facetiously. I don't mean that as an insult. This is basically pinky shtick. We saw this in the Rainboom episode where she discovered how much she enjoys not only smiling, but giving smiles to others. That is basically her purpose in living, or what I like to refer to as her core. And... God, there's no nice way to say this. Like I said, I, this is someone who is trying and desperately and working to try and keep the bubble inflated. You know? So it makes perfect sense that she would be so like, okay, well, um, we'll go ahead and do this. It's another day. We've, we're going to have an after birthday party and then we can hang out and everyone will be happy. Everyone will be happy. Now, <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to phrase this because in my opinion, now this is of course my opinion, there's a specific slice of something happening here. It's not that she's a cartoon who just has to party all the time, which is how I feel some people see this episode, and I've heard a couple people talk about that. It's more like, and it's not just the fact that she doesn't understand uh, limits. It's, and there's one final thing, and I know that people are going to disagree with me on this. It's not that she's depressed and faking it. It's more like she's happy and terrified of losing it. And I do think that distinction is important. Now, that is, of course, just my interpretation, and I'm curious of your guys' interpretations as well. But what I'm seeing is someone who is grateful for where she's at in her life and desperately doesn't want to lose any of that, right? So she acts desperate because she is, but she shouldn't be. Is, does any of that make sense? Am I, am I explaining myself properly here? I gotta wait. Actually, yeah, that's a great way to put that, Rascor. It's like having friends for the first time and being terrified of losing them. And remember, by my own theory, which I do firmly stand behind, her and the main six are only just now starting to actually become friends. In fact, I would say we haven't, we haven't even hit the official point of, ha of actually being firmly friends yet. God, poor Pinky. Now, this episode's actually pretty smartly written, in my opinion. There's a nice little tidbit where uh, Twilight says, yeah, we should have another party soon. I mean, Pinky's birthday is the next day, right? I'm pretty sure that was in her thoughts when she was saying that. You can't tell me Twilight, misorganized, didn't know that. <laughs> um, also, interesting to think that Gummy's birthday is right before her own. But anyways, so... Twilight's argument is, uh, books, books, there, okay. Yeah, exactly, Echt Klug, uh, I always pronounce your name wrong, I'm so sorry. Echt Klug. Echt Klug. Well, see, that depends on how you define the word friends, Lord Harriman. So let me make this more clear. I would say that she and the main six are not real friends yet that they've been developing a real friendship over the course of season one. That at the beginning, she probably was kind of friend. I mean, there's even an episode that shows that Rainbow Dash actively didn't like being around her until the, the Prankster episode, at which pace Rainbow Dash started to enjoy her company, right? So she's what I would refer to as acquaintances with everyone in Ponyville, with Rarity and with Fluttershy and with... Mrs. Cake and with the the mayor and you know all the all the ponies right, but real friends, no, that's been developing. You'll notice only the main six were invited to both parties, by the way. Anyways, yeah, there's friends and then there's 
real friends. So uh, Twilight needs to pick uh, to pick apples. Twilight needs to pick up her books, and Applejack needs to pick apples. By the way, am I the only person who noticed that while all of them are bad liars, Applejack is by far the worst at, at lying? Which I mean makes sense, but it's just amusing that they bothered to actually point that out throughout the episode. And then uh, apparently Rarity is a slob. Did you see how much trash she had to take out? That wasn't pleasant-looking trash, either. And, of course, Spike has a crush on Rarity, so we're going to go ahead and add to the Rarity crush counter, which is now up to five. I'm really curious when this counter will stop ticking up. It'll happen. Yeah, we, we need to pick apples, because that's what we do. We, we... Anyways. <clears throat> so, she has to wash her hair and actually dunks her hair in the trash just to make it work. Rarity. Although, if you ever wonder how much of a friend Rarity is, <laughs> probably act. Kluke. Um, sorry, sorry. I'll just try. I'll try to just say act. No promises. So let's see. Then, then, then there's the sequence where we're. They're actually. It, it, it's it's really good animation. Rainbow and Fluttershy physically animate as they give their lies. I can't do German. I've never been able to do German, dude. Like, I have actually studied German. I have, like, if you go up two generations, excuse me, three generations. Yeah, three generations up, you have people who were born in Germany in my family. I still can't do German. Anyway, sorry. <clears throat> Hi. So, <laughs> the uh, Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy start actually animating as they're talking about you know, their, their respective lies. And as they animate, they actually screw up their own animations as they're starting to screw up their own lies. It's actually just a very, very small point that I bet most people didn't even notice. And it's really good. Just excellent animation in the show. And, of course, they're like, wait! Uh, yeah, what? Nope, sorry. Uh, oh, look at the time. I, I gotta get going. <clears throat> so then finally she's like, huh, okay, well... I guess that's that's getting a little suspicious. I mean, it makes perfect sense that they have to go house-sitting for a bear, but what about everyone else? Of course, Pinky would believe that one the most. This then leads to... Uh, yeah, of course, of course, Rascor. This then leads to the spy music section, which I actually have to admit I enjoyed more than I thought I would. You know, the pseudo Bond, James Bond kind of thing, or maybe kind of Pink Panther leaning, you know? Just... Do -do 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 -do. And... Uh, there's this interesting bit where Pinky has a line where she says, but we're friends. What wouldn't Twilight want me to know anything about? Now, aside from the fact that it's a very strangely constructed sentence, it's interesting to think about, isn't it? Now, you don't have to answer this question, but how many of you have things that you keep from your friends for whatever reason? Maybe it's just something that's personal. Or maybe it's something you're embarrassed about. Or maybe it's something that's just none of their business. Or maybe it's something that doesn't have anything to do with anything. Right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, right? I mean, that's just, that's being, live. I say being human, she's a pony, but it, it is, it's part of being human. It's one of those interesting things, and I bring this up because this has actually come up in far more serious shows than this one. Uh, the idea and discussion of, you know, on, only only the guilty keep secrets. And it's like, no, that's stupid. Everybody keeps secrets. <sighs> yeah, we're going to be talking about that right after this one, Nova Knight. We're going to chop off, watch it, and then we'll chop back on for it. Now, that's true. P uh, J. Maria Greywell has a good point. Pinkie Pie has an encyclopedic knowledge of everyone else in Ponyville. That'll come up in Season 2 as well. And... I think Season 3... And then, you know, it'll just keep coming out. Let's just let's just lay it down. Because I, as I was thinking about it, I thought of like three separate episodes where that comes up, so. Yeah, if you don't have anything to hide, why don't you want me to invest... If you have nothing to hide, why not allow me to investigate you? Anyways, yeah, so moving on. <clears throat> so, there's this bit where Pinkie Pie has a line and she says, I thought everybody loved my parties. That one kind of hit. You know, that, uh, I thought everyone loved my ruminations. You know, I, I know that's a dumb example, but I bet several of you can think of something in your life where you could basically replace whatever instead of parties. And, yeah. 
So we see Pinky's super speed again as she chases after Rambo. And Applejack is then once again absolutely terrible at lying. Yep, we're working on a new barn. Drill, drill. And this is also where I wrote down my note. I told you I wrote it down where I said the expressions, Pinky's expressions are fantastic. Meanwhile, Spike is incredibly ignorant. I actually really like the interrogation scene. But I can't be the only one who noticed that what he does is he pulls a Pinkie Pie on Pinkie Pie. He is so innocently ignorant of what she's doing and talking about that he just responds to everything forthrightly, which basically means he's not actually responding to her the way she's responding to him, right? And he and yeah, there's this horrible line. I actually wrote it down, uh, word for word. Tell me what you want me to say, and I'll say it. And then when she says it, he repeats her word for word. Although, I do have to mention one other thing. Rarity, total knockout. Twilight thinks I don't have a shot with her, but what does she know? But yeah, very unintentionally. And and he, he just repeats exactly what it is. And he doesn't even realize what's going on. Although, I love the part, confess! Okay, it was me. I'm the one who spilled juice in the book. Confess! I was the one who got rid of all the hot water by taking a seven-hour bubble bath. By the way, a seven-hour bubble bath? Doesn't that get boring after, like, minute three? I, I don't know. Whatever. <clears throat> I, I stand in front of the mirror and go, looking good. Looking good. <clears throat> yeah, no. So he repeats her word for word. And then her hair deflates. Now... I think so, Jim Marie Grewal. Not the last, certainly, but I believe it is the first. Her hair deflating is probably one of the better parts of the episode, mostly because of the continuity involved. This is why I like continuity, by the way. Because... We've already seen Pinkie Pie with deflated hair back in her backstory episode with the Rainboom episode, before she discovered smiling, before the rainbow happened, she actually had the exact same styling of hair, even though she was a kid. This kind of goes back to my analogy earlier about how she's trying constantly to keep the bubble inflated, right? And she's so desperate to not lose it, because at all times she is afraid of losing it, even though there's really no good reason for her to be that afraid. And I don't mean that as an insult. Because I understand it perfectly well. Because what she does is she doesn't really expect the worst of them. Not really. She expects the worst of herself. Right? I mean, it's not their fault they don't want to hang out with her. Not really. After all, she's the one who's not good enough to be hung around. It's her parties that they don't enjoy. It's her presence they don't enjoy. It's her they don't want to be around. Right? I wasn't good enough and now I will lose everything. No, we outs. If we use a callback counter, it would just be a continuity counter and it would go through. Oh, I mean, we could do that, but I'd have to kind of all. We'd already have to go back and come up. That's not a bad idea, though, having a continuity counter. I'll have to think about it. It's her fault. And I don't know about you guys, but I know that one extremely well. I know exactly what that feels like. Just, yeah. How many of you have ever had a thing where you have basically been like, oh, you know, such and such. Therefore, logically, the only possible explanation is that I have failed. A couple little notes there. Yeah, I know, right, Ect? A couple little notes. First of all, Andrea Lib Libman, I don't I have no idea how to pronounce her name. She does a really great job with the the party she does with all the pieces. Second of all, you notice the party that she throws when she's in this state is more like a formal. Like a capital F, a formal. Uh, yes, could you please pass a little bit of additional thing? Yes, I would be most obliged by this, thank you very much. You know, that kind of a thing. Which is interesting in its own right, especially in total contrast to the party both before and after. A tea party, yeah. Um, the second point, and I, I have to point this out, even though it's just a really minor point. Madame Leflower asks for more cake. 
Madame or Madame Le Flower, the 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 bag of flour asks for more cake. Anyways, <clears throat> so obviously Rainbow Dash comes by and shoves her back, and she realizes what the party is about, and blah blah blah. But I really, really love that insight into Pinky's character, that self-loathing and that fear. There's actually a lot of different types of fear in real life. Um, there's survivalist fear, you know, a T-Rex is chasing you. There's rational fear, you know, oh God, I'm, I'm worried I'm going to lose my job in the next round of layoffs. Then there's irrational fears, which are called that for a very specific reason. And I would argue very strongly that what Pinkie Pie is going through here is an irrational fear. That this is something that she is afraid of with no actual reasonable, logical explanation to be afraid of it. Which makes very... Yeah, I was just saying, it's very fitting for Pinkie Pie to feel that way. And I think episodes like this are one of the reasons why Pinkie Pie, despite her weirdness, is still a character I enjoy. I enjoy Pinkie Pie when they write her well, is really what that boils down to. Every now and again, they, they like to write her as kooky without reason. You know, basically writing her off as if she's just weird, the end, and that's like the full extent of her character. That always irritates me, mostly because it's doing disservice to the character we see in this episode. And yeah, she does, that's, that's a good way to put that way out. She very much goes all the way with everything she does. Pinky doesn't hold back at all. In fact, that'll actually cause her issues later with Maud. I like the idea of a continuity counter. Um, so let's go ahead and add one for this episode. Oh, God, I'm going to have to figure out how much continuity there's already been in previous episodes. I know there's been at least a bit. Hop, skip, and a jump comes to mind immediately. We'll have to figure that out because next week... That is to say, next episode, which is actually going to be happening in about 30 minutes, we're going to be adding several continuity counters. We could also just start it at Season 2, or start it here. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and chop off the local recording.